Well, day two of the Kotaku staff versus their boss rages on. There's been a lot of updates, including apparently some punishment for employees for stepping out of line, as well as the employees banding together and striking back in a hilariously futile way. Now, I want to be very clear leading up into this, as you can no doubt tell I'm taking great joy in the fact that Kotaku is going through this. The site has printed lies about me in the past, costing me sponsorship deals, and has been consistently used against me by those who disagree with my opinion. People who knowingly use lies about why I was banned from Magic the Gathering, pointing to this article on Kotaku's website saying I was banned for bullying, which is absolutely verifiably false in the email. As I have showed many times, the reason I was banned boiled down to saying a few mean things and posting Pepe memes. The site itself continues to lie about other creators, puts people who make fan games for Nintendo at risk by getting them in their, under the eye of Nintendo USA, and many more things. Kotaku is absolutely a net negative for the video game community. That doesn't mean that they haven't produced a good article from time to time. Even a blind squirrel will find a nut. And I don't take any joy in people losing their jobs. And I truly don't believe you're going to see any kind of mass layoff at Kotaku. What you're going to see is people self-terminating. You've got a power struggle between the people that pay the salaries and the people that agreed to do the work in exchange for the salaries. I don't think you have to be a rocket surgeon to know who's going to win. We saw yesterday the lead editor at Deadspin stood out of line and was immediately terminated. You're going to see some of the wokest writers on Kotaku probably going out on their own, starting Patreons, starting their own websites. And this is something I 110% support. I don't know why any writer who writes for any major video game website wouldn't already be doing this. The countless journalists who write for IGN, Kotaku, Polygon, I don't think any of them have any kind of personal presence online outside of writing for these dying media sites. The web has changed. People listen to videos. Heck, most of my channel is people not even watching the video, listening to me, reading articles and commenting on them. Website revenue is dead. It's almost impossible to keep them going. And I think that when you look at why the ownership of Kotaku rolled out these hyper intrusive autoplay video ads is not because they thought it was some new flashy thing that they should do. It's because they needed it. They needed the money. And when you find out that Kotaku writers start at $50,000 a year, you're talking about a significant expense. Now, some people who live on the coasts will act like this is not a lot of money, but you've got to understand these people aren't rolling into the office every day. They're not even producing articles every week. Schreier puts out an article randomly and he's the biggest name on the site. You've got an old tweet surfacing from late 2018. Yes, we've had it for nearly three years and it's been excellent. Pro protects our benefits and ensures that we have leverage when we're dealing with corporate management. Thanks to our union, the minimum salary for a starting full-time Kotaku writer is 50K better than many other outlets. Now, unions in modern day have very little power. There are very small niches where unions still are valuable to the employees, but in a world where you can hire anyone to do your job from anywhere, they are completely pointless. The fact that these writers for sites like Buzzfeed think that their union is going to protect them is woefully uneducated. They don't know their own replacement value and just how quickly they can be replaced. But this isn't shocking when you 
look at how a lot of these journalists view themselves as a second tier, a tier above other people. I've got to be honest, most of anyone who works at Kotaku is far from a journalist. They call themselves that, but they don't do any actual journalism. They might stumble into it. Schreier might poop out a random article where insiders from Riot Games or Blizzard tattletale on their bosses and he gets huge credit for journalism. But at the end of the day, outside of Schreier, they've got nobody. The fact that Schreier has done very little to monetize his brand outside of Kotaku is shocking. He puts out books every once in a while, which I guess is good. But as a new dad, you'd think he'd want to be uh, expanding his brand and increasing his reach. We look at articles like the real problem with hookup workers in video games. How Diablo 3 is always on internet required makes it a better game. In the end, Diablo 3 just shouldn't have been always online. Written by the same guy. What games taught me about having two girlfriends at once? Pokemon Go could be a ending sentence for a black man. I mean, there's just unending clickbait. And I agree that Kotaku has done good articles. They've done good guides, but the problem is, and this is really a bigger problem for all websites, is people don't read them anymore. They don't read them outside of what? Hate bait. And that is what Kotaku, a once mighty website, has essentially had to turn to to generate any revenue at all. These articles that are getting used against them, all their terrible headlines, and you know, you have these three or four writers that essentially just write clickbait, you know, they probably don't sleep well at night. They don't sleep, uh, I would say, they're not proud of their work, is what I'm saying. And the site itself does have good content, but when you've been around as long as they have, the number of just trash articles out there on the internet with your name attached to it is unending. You know, you have here $50,000. It's impossible to separate Cuphead from the era that inspired it. Maybe we can't handle smart enemies in our games. Help, I accidentally bought Mario Party instead of Smash. These people are starting at $50,000 a year to just write bait. That's why nobody respects them. And now I get it. Even if you have a website that is full of informative gaming information, it's difficult to keep someone's attention in this era, especially with a website with all the people that block ads and just people come to YouTube to consume their content or podcasts to a lesser extent. But then you got some of the worst takes of people defending them because they think that defending Kotaku is somehow owning gamers. You've got Movie Blob here. If your opinion on what's happening to the writers and employees at Kotaku, Deadspin, and across Gizmodo, etc. is anything other than horror and disgust, corporate vultures squeezing journalists out of their jobs, you're a bad person. You can kiss my butt. Yeah, no, you're not a bad person. You aren't a bad person for wanting a better product, as we've seen many people tweet out today. And at the end of the day, they still have a boss. If you wanted to be able to write whatever you wanted, whenever you wanted, you should have your own website and not a boss. See, the trade-off is a $50,000 minimum salary, all right? But then you have to toe the line. Many of my fellow creators here on YouTube struck out on their own and get to make the content that they want to make as long as we can. And that's bothering them. That's why they have so much contention, so much of a contentious relationship with YouTubers. Kotaku staff reprimanded after highlighting atrocious ads. An interesting situation has developed across the pond. Several staff members of Kotaku's US-based offices have reportedly been fired, scratched out, been reprimanded today after a post complaining of new atrocious ads that were appearing on the website was published yesterday. The post, which was featured on Geno Media, included Gizmodo Deadspin Jezebel, highlighted atrocious ads that were appearing as a result of new private equity owner management team. And like I said, they don't put these ads in place if your site isn't struggling. The posts were quickly removed, presumably by the same new faction. On the as a consequence of the post, Kotaku's Jason Schreier, Stephen Totillo, Gita Jackson, Heather Alexandria appear to have been reprimanded with some sort of undisclosed punitive measure. At the same time, 
Deadspin deputy editor Barry Pacheski has confirmed he was fired. You have obviously the Schreier Post, and then you have like Gita Jackson, messages of solidarity are heartening. Heather Alexandra, so uh, I still really want to tell you about Death Stranding later this week, but uh, you know, it seems like they've been given maybe some time off, some time to think about it. You've got their new tweet suggests that Kotaku staff have been reprimanded in some manner, but not have not lost their positions. We've reflected this throughout the post. Accordingly, you've got Stephen Totillo saying, Another tough day at the office. I've seen a Kotaku through some rough waters before, thanks to my amazing team. Can I do it again? We'll see. We all love the site and the family of sites we're in and are extremely motivated to do right by our readers and viewers. Then you have Heather Alexandria posting, a lot of trolls are acting like Kotaku's gone, but we're not. And we fight for our comrades. <laughs> More on that later. To see what the future holds, we're still going to do our best to provide the coverage readers expect. A lot of trolls. Oh, sorry. I, like, I get it. I've been on the internet long enough. Some of you hate me and my work, but you don't really know me as a person. This isn't the first time folks have been like, bye only for me to still be around when the next come, sun comes up. Look, I don't hate Heather Alexandria. I don't hate any of these journals. I think what they produce is try drivel, trash, and below standard, but that doesn't reflect to me on any of them. They might be fine people. Maybe there's some, maybe there's some, you know, it would explain a lot of it, but maybe there's some sort of, you know, look, you've got to write these junk articles every week and, you know, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Is this the type of stuff that they were produced given their only choice? Heather then posts, as you might imagine, my written impressions got somewhat delayed today. You can read them tomorrow on Kotaku. So I'm going to run Final Fantasy VII's new near auto, uh, automa, automata raid, which I hear is awesome, by the way and DPS perspective right now on Twitch. Now, how will they strike back? Apparently, this punishment, I'm assuming, is maybe a couple of days off, unpaid, or refusing, you know, getting a few less articles. Well, they struck back. I have to move Windows over here because that's what I have to do because all these hero journals are blocking me on Twitter. Here's how they struck back. Are you ready? Ooh, they stuck it to him good. GMG Union. Our unit members have changed their Twitter, Slack, and Kinja avatars in solidarity with Deadspin. Together, we are strong. Top, top reply. That'll show him. So if we look at Schreier, he's changed his logo to the GMG Union. Gita Jackson, GMG Union. Steven Totillo, GMG Union. Everybody that works for Kotaku has changed their avatars to this. Now, I think here's Heather Alexandria. But curiously, many of them really haven't been tweeting that very much. You know, Heather Alexandria just, just put out this tweet. You don't see a lot coming from Schreier. And I don't know who exactly was quote unquote punished. Okay. But you don't just. It's in, t they talk about it. This is true, you know, for all the articles they write about gamer entitlement, all right? For all the articles they write about entitlement in gamers, it appears they are completely unaware of their own entitlement. Imagine you go into your job, all right, tomorrow. Let's say you work for Quick Trip. It's a gasoline station here in the United States. You might call it a petrol station, or I don't know what you'd call it somewhere else, all right? Where you get gasoline. And... In st and a new sale comes down and bananas, they've got, you've got to put a new banana stand, a bunch of banana stands for sale. Let's just say bananas all around the store. And you think it ruins the flow, but corporate says this is the way it is. Instead of just, you know, doing what you're told because it's your job, you instead post a giant flyer in all the stores telling the customers to get involved in your personal grievance. Imagine not getting fired for that. Imagine being a coal miner. You're down in the in the mines, getting that coal, some of it going across the country, some of it going to be used, some of the real nice stuff used for model train sets, you know, all that kind of stuff. You get out of the mine, foreman's like, hey, hey, Smith, uh, I need you to, I need you to hang these uh, banners 
uh, in front of the in front of the coal mine before we go in. You know, they're they're forgetting your prostate checked, and you thought to yourself, "Hey, I don't like that." No, I'm not going to do that. I'm instead going to stand out in front of the mine and and tell every all my customers and distributors that the employees don't listen. That you should harass my boss with emails whining about ads. This is really the beginning of the end uh, for a lot of just traditional websites. Of course, Kotaku.com is not going to shut down. It will always have some amount of value. I suspect you'll see some people leaving, some people just putting out fewer articles. And I do suspect you will see a towing of the line with the website in and of itself right now. I do expect you to see a few less spicy articles. Now, it's too early to say, but... I'm suspecting that given Deadspin was told to stick to sports, Kotaku was probably told to stick to video games. I don't know this for a fact, but it's the way their employees are acting. I'm going to guess that it's at least plausible. And you don't see don't see a lot of spicy articles on here, do you? You see some noise-canceling headphones. You see you're not ready for She-Ra and the Princess Power Season 4. You got that right. Um... Outer Worlds. I'm not seeing a lot of woke articles. Um, that doesn't mean they're not coming, but I'm guessing the writers will be towing the line and the smart ones will just build their own brand rather than relying on that of Kotaku, a legacy media. You know, look at everything. Look at what's happening to US Today today. Look at the viewership even on legacy TV. Nobody cares about this stuff anymore. Nobody reads your articles on Kotaku unless you bait them into it. And the fact of the matter is fewer and fewer people have been going to Kotaku for years and they've been getting more and more desperate with their bait. And we finally reached a tipping point where new management realizes this, realizes that you've got more people that hate your website than actually like it. That should not be the way it is. Either people should like not know about it or they should visit it as opposed to having active haters for your website. It's not a good business model. There's a lot of people on the internet that could probably tell you all about that. So hopefully the bold, the beautiful writers of Kotaku.com and changing their avatars will really stick it to them and everything will go back to the way it was. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.